is 1 Neumann's minimax theorem. Got it. Any for any zero sum game A min over y in y of max over z in z y transpose a z is equal to the max over z in z min over y in y of y transpose a z. So, remember this here remember was the upper value and this here was the lower value ok. So, we are going to prove this. So, so what is before I start with the proof essentially what are, what is this what is the claim? The claim then is that the upper and lower values in the mixed upper and lower values are always equal ok for every game and what as a corollary what we have is that there is always a saddle point for any game provided you extend the space to mixed strategies ok. In pure strategies there need not be a saddle point and but in in mixed strategies there would be and we I, I in the previous class I argued what the significance of a saddle point is that saddle point is a point from which uh, you know a player would not is a is, is a saddle point which uh, such that in which each player plays his own security level and then after playing that there is no regret right the other player would also respond with his own security strategy. So, this is so this property holds now in the space of mixed strategies ok all right. So, that is what so we have so this is this is obviously a, a, a major a major landmark in the theory of games. So, uh, this this predates uh, Nash's work by several years I mean probably around it's proved around the time Nash was a few uh, was probably a child. Uh, so, uh, we will uh, so, what I will show you there are several ways of proving this what I will show you is a modern proof which is it is short and nifty uh, the, the original proof is much more complicated and uh, you know over time it has been uh, refined and this is now how we understand is the best way of proving uh, the proving the min max there ok all right. So, the we need a tool here which is uh, which is linear programming duality. So, in the linear programming duality basically, so in linear programming we talk of two types of problems a, a what is called a primal problem and another one which is called its dual problem. So, we write two or different optimization problems that are closely related to each other ok and we relate the they are formulated and crafted in a very specific way and it turns out that in that case if one of them has a solution and so does the other ok and the and the value optimal values are actually equal ok. So, I will write out a fairly general form of linear programming duality here ok. So, in its most general form it uh, the linear programming duality can be written in this sort of way. So, you have an optimization problem that looks like this. So, you are minimizing say C 1 your variables are x 1, x 2, x 3 minimizing C 1 x C 1 transpose x 1 plus C 2 transpose x 2 plus C 3 tra transpose x 3 and this is being done subject to constraints that look like this A 1 1 x 1 plus A 1 2 x 2 plus A 1 3 x 3 greater than equal to B 1 A 2 1 x 1 plus a 2 2 x 2 plus a 2 3 x 3 less than equal to b 2 
a three one x one plus a three two x two plus a three three x three equal to b three x1 is required to be greater than or equal to 0, x2 is required to be less than or equal to 0 and x3 has is unrestricted. Now, this this here is a is a linear optimization over these three variables x1, x2 and x3 and these are the constraints that the variables are required to satisfy. They are all linear constraints. The first constraint is, is asking for a linear combination of the x's to be greater than or equal to a constant b1. Second is asking it to be less than or equal to another constant b2. Third is asking for another linear combination to be exactly equal to b3. And then the x1's x1 is signed constraint to be greater than or equal to 0, x2 is constrained to be less than or equal to 0, and x3 is unrestricted. This is the most general way you can write out a linear program. Okay, most sort of explicit way in which you can write out a linear program. Of course, you can reduce it to standard form and all that, but we our problem uh, we don't benefit from putting it in standard form. That's why I'm starting off with this form. Now, corresponding to this linear problem, we have remember this problem is minimizing a linear function of x over these regions. Corresponding to this, there is what is called a dual problem. So, if this is called the primal problem, then the corresponding to it is another problem which is kind of like a twin problem to this and that is called a dual problem. So, the dual is a maximization, ok. And it is maximization of again the sum of three, three uh, linear functions, functions of now another variable we will call that variable w. So, you are maximizing b1 transpose w plus b2 b1 transpose w1 plus b2 transpose w2 plus b3 transpose w3 and the constraints are that you have a11 transpose w1 plus a21 transpose w2 plus a31 transpose w3 is less than equal to c1, a12 transpose w1 plus a22 transpose w2 plus a a32 transpose a32 transpose w3 greater than equal to c2 and a13 transpose w1 plus a23 transpose w2 plus a33 transpose w3 equals c3 and w1 greater than equal to 0, w2 less than equal to 0 and w3 is unrestricted. Okay. So, so far all I have done is just written out two, uh, two optimization problems in a very explicit manner. So, on the left you have a minimization problem which in three variables x1, x2, x3. On the right you have a maximization problem in three variables w1, w2, w3. Now, if you look at the constants of this problem, they are they are closely related. So, the object the coefficients in the objective of the of the problem on the left, the coefficients of the object the problem on the left is called primal, the problem on the right is called dual. The coefficients of the objective in the primal are actually the coefficient are the form the right hand side of the constraints of the dual. The coefficients of the objective of the dual are the right hand sides of the constraints of the primal. Okay. And if you look at the if you look at the coefficients on the left hand side of the constraints in the primal and the ones in the left hand side of the constraints of the dual, they are actually transpose of each other, right? It's as if this entire thing matrix here has been transposed and formed into a matrix here, right? Okay. 
there is also some relation between uh, uh, between the signs of these x's and the w's we can come to uh, we can come to that if necessary so now these are two problems that are obviously there is some they have been crafted in a very specific way we cannot you cannot you know sort of make whatever uh, combinations you want with it like for example this is this is a greater than equal to here okay there is a less than equal to correspond corresponding less than equal to here this is a, this is a less than equal to this is a greater than equal to okay there the this uh, the the signs of these are also very specifically uh, you know uh, decided okay now so these are as i said very uh, specifically crafted problems and they enjoy a particular property and that property is what is called linear programming duality okay so this is the if the if either primal or dual admits an optimal solution then so does the other and so does the other and the optimal values of the primal and dual are equal. So, the optimal values of these primal and dual are equal ok. So, we are not uh, saying optimal x's are equal to optimal w's obviously not. There is no claim being made about the relation between uh, the x's and the w's but what is equal here is the optimal value of the optimization. So, the objective value that you get here it will be equal to the objective value that you get here ok. Another thing to point out remember is because of the way these things have been transposed and so on x is the x x 1 here has for example, the number of variables x 1 is equal to the number of uh, number of columns of a 1 1 ok or equal to and equal to the number of columns of a 2 1 and also equal to the number of columns of a 3 1 w 1 on the other hand is equal to the number of rows of a 1 1 ok w 1 multiplies with a 1 1 transpose ok w and a 1 2 uh, and a 1 2 transpose and so on. So, the x 1 x 1 x 2 x 3 these together they, the number of variables that you have here ok the length of this uh, of x 1 x 2 x 3 put together is need not be equal to the length of w 1 w 2 w 3 put together. So, that the you cannot expect a direct correspondence a very obvious sort of correspondence between x 1 x 1 and w 1 x 2 and w 2 and x 3 and w 3, but what is remarkable is you still get equality between this in the objectives the optimal values of these objectives provided both exist uh, provided one one of them exists are equal ok all right. So, this is this is the theorem that we want to use. So, linear so we want to use linear programming duality now and what we will do is we will use linear programming duality to prove this equality that we have here ok this is what we, we are going to show. So, what we will do is the following. So, the plan is we are going to take this this left hand side we write this as, as a linear optimization a linear program ok. It will it will correspond to one of these it will correspond to the uh, the primal problem ok. So, this one will will write out as a linear optimization it will be taken as the primal problem then take its dual problem and show that the dual problem actually is nothing but this problem itself ok. So, the idea is going to be that you start off we start off with the left hand side write that as a linear op linear program consider its dual which is which is written out here in this this is this would be this was the dual of or uh, this would be this will tell us how to write out the dual of this problem and then invoke linear program then show that linear uh, that dual actually reduces to this problem 
and then use linear programming duality to claim that these values are equal. Okay, that is that is basically the the proof plan. Okay, so so let's start off with the proof. Okay, so now uh, so let's start off with V M upper bar. This was is mean over y in y max over z in capital Z y transpose a z. And remember we we argued that this is actually the same as, as min over y in capital Y max over j of y transpose a j. So, now suppose for the moment I just put let us say I put t as this quantity which is max over j y transpose a j. Then it has to be that t is greater than equal to y transpose a j for all j necessarily because t is the maximum right. Now, one way to write this 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 whole thing is to say the following. So, I multiply it. So, t is a scalar right t is the maximum over over j of y transpose a j. So, what I am going to do is I am going to multiply t with a vector of 1s ok. So, t times 1 is greater than equal to so a vector of 1. So, this 1 is a column vector. So, I will just transpose it. So, t times 1 transpose is greater than equal to y transpose a. This is a compact way of writing what I already have here. So, what is cap what is this vector of 1s here? This is just simply a, a this is a vector 1 a ve vector with every component as 1. It is a column vector with every component as 1. So, t times 1 transpose is basically a vector is a is a row vector with t t t t t in all its component that is equal to every component of this of another row vector y transpose it. No, for the fi for a fixed y. Yeah. So, I have put t so question right uh, I have put t equal to y transpose a uh, y, see, I have to put t equal to y trans the max over j of y transpose a j ok and I I I encode this as this relation this this implies that t is greater than equal to this and that is that is encoded in this sort of form ok. All of this is being done for a fixed y. Now, suppose I asked you again for a fixed y suppose I asked you what is the minimum t Okay, what is the least value of t such that t into 1 transpose is greater than equal to y transpose a. What is this value? So, if t was the maximum then t satisfies this this uh, this inequality that I just wrote ok. Now, suppose if I look at any t that satisfies this inequality and look at the minimum such value of t, what is that minimum value? That is actually equal to the max over j, right. So, this is all this is always equal to the max over j of y transpose a a j. So, what has happened as a result is that if you look at the inner maximization here, the, the yellow boxed one that is equivalent to this. Hmm? So, we have just established the uh, relation this relation ok all right. So, now what I can do is therefore, go back and now I have I was going to write minimum of y over y max over j y transpose a j. Now, that is actually equal to the same as minimum of y over y and minimum of over t of of t such that 
T 1 transpose is um, is greater than equal to y transpose a right it is a minimum is this clear. So, I am minimizing over y this thing this exact thing that I just wrote up, but then I am minimizing for I, what am I doing here if you see this I am doing a minimization followed by a minimization. So, what that means is essentially I am actually doing just minimization right I can combine the two variables t and y and write them eventually as one minimization. So, effectively this becomes actually the minimum of t over both variables t comma y subject to all these constraints subject to the constraints in y as well as the constraints that are there in t ok subject to this t into 1 transpose greater than equal to y transpose a and the constraints that are there in y. What are the constraints in y? y is just required to be a capital capital y is just saying that small y is a probability distribution right. So, y is greater than equal to 0 and summation of the components of y is this is equal to 1 right. So, is this is this fine? So, this here encodes this is my capital Y this this guy has come from here this together is actually equal to my left hand side which was nothing but my V m upper bar ok. So, now V m upper bar has been written in this sort of form let us clean this up and, uh, and so, it is a little yeah, you know more presentable. So, what I will do is I will remove the transposes from the first one and I will I will rather I will just transpose the first one and let us write it like this let us write it as um, t into 1 is greater than equal to a transpose y and then the other is the I have my uh, summation over y i summation over y is nothing but again because I have this notation of ones the vector of ones this is actually nothing but 1 transpose y equal to 1 and I have y greater than equal to 0 and my variable t which is also variable is unrestricted here. There is no there is no constraint on the sign of t. So, only thing you need to really I mean uh, just uh, convince yourself is that when you take two minimizations one after the other they are actually just one minimization ok. You can just do a joint minimization of of oh, instead of doing in here you are minimizing over one variable first then minimizing over keeping the outer one as a parameter and then minimizing over the outer one. It is the same thing if you just jointly minimize both jointly minimize over both ok. Any vector minimization actually is basically a joint minimization over individual scalars. So, that is exactly what is going on here ok all right ok. So, we have now written this out. So, what is this now? This is now a linear program ok. So, we what we have got is that V m upper bar can be written as a as simply the solution of a linear program ok and we will take this to be our primal we will take this to be the primal and we will invoke linear pro the linear programming duality theorem that we just that we just wrote previously ok. So, we are going to write this as a primal problem in this particular form here is this fine all right. So, now can someone tell me if now this is to be taken as the primal then let us just decide the values um, maybe we just I can write them out here itself tell me what are the various variables first how do we how do I model it in this form what my my uh, my y is required to be greater than equal to 0. So, I can take x 1 to be y this is my y ok. So, I will take x 1 to be y t is unrestricted. So, I will just take x 3 as t ok I will take this to be t all right ok. Now, uh, let us start with the coefficients in the objective. What do I have in the objective? I have only t in the objective, which means that so this c 3 is 1, x 3 is t, okay, x 3 is t, x 1 is y, x 1 and c, c 1 and c, there is no coefficient, there is no term in y 
in the objective okay so therefore c1 and c uh, c1 and c2 are both zero so there is not so these are zero there is also no variable x2 which is less than equal to zero so all coefficients of x2 can be put as zero okay so all of these guys are taken as zero is this fine okay now let's look at the let's look at the constraint now uh, let's do first the let's first write out the uh, let's look at the equality constraint first okay let's take this one first so one transpose y equal to uh, equal to one so which means that in my equality constraint here i have my b3 here should be scalar one okay so this guy should be one y was x1 so the coefficient of y here should be one transpose right one transpose meaning means that this a31 this guy is is one transpose here a31 is one transpose uh, there is no coefficient for um, uh, t in this equation so which means that this a33 is zero okay let us go back here in fact let us write this uh, uh, write this in the form ok uh, what I will do is I will take this uh, the first equation I will actually write this in a less than equal to form ok. So, that might make things easier for us. So, I will so I have I, this as a transpose y minus 1 times t is less than equal to 0 ok. So, now this is a less than equal to equation if this is since this is a less than equal to equation my the ob, the right hand side of that equation is is b2 ok. So, this guy has to be less than equal to constraint. So, right hand side b2 is 0 what about the coefficient of x1 that means the coefficient of y a transpose right ok. So, which means that a 2 1 here this guy is is a transpose and the coefficient of of x 3 which is a 2 3 a 2 3 is just 1. Is there any equation with of the greater than equal to form? Is there any constraint of the greater than equal to form here? there is none. So, so we can just take all those coefficients also as 0. So, all of these are also 0 ok. So, so these guys are all 0 this was 0 this is 0 ok. This is fine and now what do we know is the dual of this then we can read out the dual here ok. So, let us let us cancel out stuff that is not uh, that is anyway not that that is going to disappear. So, c 1 remember c 1 c 2 are 0. So, c 1 this guy is 0 c 2 is 0 c 3 is 1. So, that is 1 ok b 1 is 0 b 2 is 0. So, that is so these are gone b 3 is 1 so, this is 1 ok a 1 2 a 2 2 and a 3 2 this whole column was uh, here 0. So, a 1 2 a 2 2 a 3 2 being 0 that will basically ensure that this this is out of question here this is gone ok all right. What else? a 1 1 a 1 2 and a 1 3 are 0 a 1 1 a 1 2 and a 1 3. So, these are all 0 ok a 3 3 was 0 this is also 0. Let us populate the things that remain now uh, a 2 1 is a transpose. So, a 2 1 transpose therefore, is just a. So, this is just a now ok a times w w 2 ok. 
A31 was 1 transpose. So, A31 transpose is now 1. A23 was a vector 1. So, A23 transpose is a vector 1 transpose. Okay. Now, if you see here, what's happened is all the um, the coefficients corresponding to W1 have all disappeared from the problem. So, W1 is as good as not there in the problem. So, this guy is not there. Okay. What you have is just what you have is W2 and W3. Okay, W2 is less than equal to 0 and W3 is unrestricted. Okay, so let us uh, let us write this out in a clean form. So, the dual now of this is this was my primal. So, my dual is going to be what was the objective? Objective was just 1 times W3. So, it is just maximization of W3. And I had two constraints a times w2 plus 1 times w3 less than equal to 0. So, a transpose y minus 1 1 times t, you know. So, this here is this was minus 1, this is a transpose. So, this guy uh, there is a a transpose here. So, this is to be minus 1, ok. So, this is my this is minus 1. Since this is minus 1, a 2 3 therefore is also minus minus 1 transpose. Okay. So, the constraints are that a times w 2 plus 1 times w 1 into w 3 is less than equal to 0, negative 1 transpose w 2 is equal to 1, w 2 is less than equal to 0, and w 3 is unrestricted. Okay. Now, all I need to do is a small change of variables. Okay. So, let us put from here put uh, w 3 as um, as let us just denote this by w okay. and let red, uh, let minus w 2 be z, z equal to minus w 2. So, then in the, that case this takes then the problem the dual problem becomes max over w a times z greater than or equal to 1 into w 1 transpose z equal to 1 and z greater than or equal to 0 with w understood. Now, all we have to do is go back and interpret interpret this this problem. Now, you can see here just looking at this itself. So, I am maximizing this remember now over w and z. Just looking at this already this is seeming similar to what we had written uh, for the rope layer for the for the upper mixed value right for for v m upper bar. So, for v m upper bar we wrote a minimization over t. Uh, with vari over variables minimization of t over variables t and y. Now, here we are doing a maximization of w over variables w and z. y was required to be uh, a probability distribution here, here z is turning out to be a probability distribution right and the t was in was this 10 t was t times 1 was greater than equal to 1 transpose y right and here uh, 1 times w is less than equal to a, a times w, a times z okay so all i have to do now is basically just reinterpret the, i have to interpret this thing go back and check if this matches with the with vm lower bar okay so suppose i so so let's let's uh, let's just do that now okay so so again, uh, like I did with uh, for the uh, for the row player. So put. So suppose if W was min over i of a z, the i throw of a z. Then we again have that min over i of 
is that I is actually the max value of W such that W is less than W times uh, 1 is less than equal to AZ right is the largest value of W such that W times uh, the vector of 1s is less than equal to AZ that is actually equal to the minimum smallest component in uh, of AZ ok. So, from there therefore, we have that max over Z in Z min over I of A Z I is in fact max over W comma Z of W with these constraints A Z greater than equal to and this problem is basic exactly the problem that we got here ok. This is exactly what we got. So, in other words what have we concluded therefore, that this we have concluded that this guy here this box problem is in fact equal to V m lower bar, but then linear programming duality tells us that these two are equal. Now, to be exact actually uh, linear programming duality tells us that these two are equal if one of them has a has an optimal solution ok has an has a finite optimal value. Now, why do any of them have an finite optimal value? Because the optimal value is in fact their security level and we just argued that there is a security strategy and a security level for each layer ok. So, once a security strategy and a security level exists the, so there is a solution to uh, the there is a finite optimal value to each of these to either or an, and in fact each of these linear programs and therefore, the fine form linear programming duality the optimal values have to be equal ok. So, by linear programming duality these two become equal and so therefore, we get that V m upper bar is actually all is equal to V m lower bar. this is von Neumann's min max theorem ok. So, we have basically shown that from here. So, that that the uh, that the mix once you allow players to play mixed strategies there is the upper and lower values of the game and that in short their security levels actually coincide as a corollary there always exists a saddle point every pair of security strategies forms a saddle point every saddle point is a pair of security strategies and every saddle point must have the same value all of these properties we get for free ok. Now, the just a couple of remarks before I end about the proof this proof is as I said a modern proof it uses linear programming duality linear programming duality was derived in the 1940s in okay, 1944 46 somewhere around that time von Neumann's min max theorem is 1932 ok that is so, it is well before uh, linear programming duality. So, but what is interesting is that I mean it was I have so obviously I am I am giving you a proof in that is that is shorter in retrospect now that we know the the whole language of linear programming duality. So, von Neumann's original proof effectively derived linear programming duality as part of part of proving this ok. So, his original proof is a separation based argument and it he effectively just uh, anticipates linear programming duality and its development as part of his proof ok ok. So, yeah so in uh, in other words all the things that we so what have we uh, concluded that all the the things that we were sort of we realized would hold if there was a saddle point in pure strategies now actually but but a saddle point in pure strategies did not exist and therefore, we were kind of handicapped now all of those things actually hold provided we move to mixed strategies ok. So, in other words the theory of games for zero sum games is now uh, now stands watertight we have a a solution in uh, in which both players sort of think of what the worst the case damage the other player could do therefore, play security strategies and these security strategies are in equilibrium with each other 
that each player would want to respond to the other guy's security strategy with his own security strategy. And so that basically gives us now a a a a, a, a uh, watertight theory for zero sum games. 